Cottom is a residential suburb to the northwest of Preston, which has developed over recent decades around what was once a rural village of mainly farms and small holdings. But settlement here goes back over many centuries. The name Cottom derives from the Old English words cot and um, which mean at the cottages. Cottom formed part of a medieval township with Leah, Ashton and Ingle, and both Ashton and Leah appear in the Doomsday Book. A manor house, Cottom Hall, may have existed here by the end of the 13th century. Historian Henry Fishwick wrote that the earliest landowners on record in Cottom were the Haydocks, one of whom was Henry de Haydock, who, in a charter, granted lands in Cottom to Geoffrey de Cottom at a yearly rent of 15 pence and half a pound of cinnamon. The Haydocks would live here until the 18th century. From their earliest days, the Haydocks were an influential Lancashire Catholic family, and in the centuries after Henry VIII, Cotton provided a place of worship for persecuted Catholics. According to tradition, priests were hidden here, and Cotton Hall was a frequent target for the anti-Catholic authorities. The name Cotton is first mentioned in records in the period 1177 to 82, when Arthur of Ashton granted some land in Cotton and the land next the full site to Richard, son of Uchtred. The Cotton Tithe Map of 1838 marks a north-south brook named Foulsyke, immediately south of the Great Intact Field, which is next to the enclosure containing Cotton Old Hall, with its larger barn close by. The Ordnance Survey Map of 1848 confirms the position of the hall, the barn and the Great Intact Field, with a pond clearly marked to its eastern side. By the time of the next Ordnance Survey map of 1895, the old hall has been demolished and the present Cotton Hall farmhouse has been built on the same site. The name Foulsyke is probably derived from Fulsyche, and so the land grant in Cotton of 1177 was close to the great intact field and the site of today's farmhouse. It would be nice to think that part of the 19th century pond is still present here, but the ancient Falsite Brook does definitely still run away from below the great intact field close to Valentine's Meadow to join the Savic Brook further down. Catholic historian Joseph Gillow wrote in great detail about the Haydock family of Cotton Hall in this book, The Haydock Papers, published in 1888. Gillow was born in 1850 in Frenchwood House in Preston, and his ancestors, like the Haydocks, had from the time of Henry VIII refused to conform to the new Protestant Church of England. Gillow's mother Jane was also a Haydock and could trace her family line back to Christopher Haydock of Cotton Hall, who'd been Mayor of Preston in 1528-29, then elected to Parliament from 1529 to 1536, and then listed as a Guild in Burgess and Alderman in 1542 and 1562. A Robert de Haydock was MP for Lancashire in 1299 and his grandson John de Haydock was granted a licence for a chapel in his manor house at Cottom by the Archdeacon of Richmond in the first half of the 14th century. This is the first specific reference to a manor house and a chapel here at Cottom. The Haydock family were devout Catholics and over centuries many generations of sons went off to study in Rome and in France to be ordained as priests. The family is still remembered today in street names and in the name of the local church. Blessed George Haydock's story is a sad reminder of Catholic persecution from the time of the Reformation onwards. George Haydock was born in 1556, the youngest son of Vivian and Helen Haydock of Cotton Hall. When Elizabeth I became Queen just two years later in 1558, 
she became supreme governor of the new Church of England and reimposed its power over Catholics. All public figures and church officials had to swear an oath of allegiance and penalties were placed upon those who persisted in following the Pope and in celebrating Mass. Those who refused to attend Anglican church services were known as recusants. Catholic Mass became illegal in England in 1559 and in 1570 Queen Elizabeth was excommunicated by the Pope. She imposed stricter laws which made it treasonous to be a Catholic and these penal laws meant that sheltering or helping priests could be punished by death. It was against this background of persecution that our blessed George Haydock grew up in Cotton. In 1573, 20 years after the death of his wife, George's father Vivian Haydock decided to commit his life to the Catholic faith. He handed over the Cotton Hall estate to his eldest son William and took his two younger sons, Richard and George, to Douai in France. Vivian later returned to Lancashire as a missionary priest and is said to have been buried under the chapel in Cotton Hall. But why did he go to Douai? George Haydock's mother's family was related by marriage to Cardinal William Allen of Rossall. Douai, the English college was a Catholic seminary for the training of priests set up by Cardinal Allen in 1568. Of course such training was forbidden in England. Youngest brother George was ordained a priest in December 1581. When he returned to England in 1582 he was betrayed and quickly arrested and imprisoned in the Tower of London. On the 5th of February 1584, he was charged with having conspired against Queen Elizabeth I, whom he said was a heretic. He remained loyal to the Pope and so his fate was sealed. He was sentenced to death and hanged at Tyburn on the 12th of February 1584. George Haydock was still alive when he was cut open and disemboweled. His skull is rumoured to have been brought back to the chapel at Cotton Hall. When the family estate was sold in the early 1700s, Blessed George Haydock's skull was taken to Lane End's house in Maudsley, home of one of the sisters of the last squire of Cotton. It remained there for many years in the priest's hiding place, adjoining the chapel at the top of the house. This photo was taken in 1906. George Haydock's martyrdom is of course still remembered by the sharing of the dedication in the naming of the church in Cotton, St Andrew and Blessed George Haydock. Old Cotton Hall can clearly be seen on the first published Ordnance Survey map of 1848. It was said to be demolished in the late 1850s and a new farmhouse built on the same plot. The farmhouse was smaller and a little bit to the south of the original hall. In April 2000, Oxford Archaeology North was commissioned to carry out an archaeological survey on a proposed development site at Cotton Hall. The report is dated May 2003. Their location map shows the survey area to be the Great Intact Field close to the present Cotton Hall farm. The survey was to investigate the possible medieval moat of Cotton Hall in the northwestern corner of the field. Also to investigate the earthworks visible on air photographs which might be the remains of Ridge and Furrow earthworks and the place in the Great Intact field where these musket balls and clay pipes have been found by the farm's residents, believed to indicate the possible site of a civil war or a Jacobite skirmish. A former owner of the farm, Mr Cummings, described how, in the 1950s, he had ploughed out hummocks in the field, which are believed to have been the remains of medieval ridge and furrow earthworks. Today, from above, there are still obvious lines of something in those fields. The ancient oak, the large oak tree at the northern boundary of the site, was already protected by a tree preservation order in 2003, and the Oxford report suggests that legend associates it with the search for and execution of refusing recusant Catholics in the mid-17th century. 
This is a reconstruction of what the old Cotton Hall may have looked like and is credited by Oxford to another survey and study of Old Cotton Hall published in 1985. It was undertaken by a group of local history and archaeology students at the University of Liverpool, the group led by historian Dorothy O'Hanlon. They were also looking for evidence of a medieval moated site on land that at that time was part of the Central Lancashire Development Corporation's plans for development. Away from the actual hall site, this study group was looking at wider land use in Cotton. The group surveyed fields to the west of Cotton Hall, then under pasture, in which earlier ridge and furrow ploughing marks could still be seen. On this illustration from the O'Hanlon study, these fields lie to the south of Woodfield Farm, Cotton Lodge and Merrytree Farm. On the 1838 tithe map, they are the fields called Great Field, Pasture, Cotton and Three Nooks. This photo from the study shows the Great Field with its ridge and furrow marks visible in 1981. Today, those fields of ploughing lie in this area of modern cotton. The 1985 study also made survey of ditches and earthworks to the southwest of the farmhouse and barn, in the area close to the southwest corner of the Great Intact Field. These may have been fish ponds associated with Cotton Hall, such ponds being common in medieval manors. The 1985 study tells us that the large stone barn close to the west of the hall was built in the 1700s and was later extended. As well as this hall reconstruction, the study also includes this 1838 tithe map which we saw earlier. The position of the barn buildings on different maps allows us to see that the old hall was a little closer towards the site of the ancient oak pub than the present farm and so visitors today may well be eating and drinking in what once were the Hall Gardens. But Blessed George Haydock was not the first of the family to suffer for his faith. After Henry VIII's dissolution of the monasteries, the Pilgrimage of Grace was a Catholic uprising that began in Yorkshire in October 1536. It spread to other parts of northern England. William Haydock, a younger son of William Haydock of Cotton Hall, was involved. William was a monk at the Cistercian Worley Abbey. The abbot of Worley, John Paslew, along with his monks, joined in the Pilgrimage of Grace against Henry VIII to restore the monasteries. They were arrested and tried at the Assizes in Lancaster. On the 9th of March 1537, the abbot pleaded guilty to five counts of treason and was hanged and probably drawn and quartered too at Lancaster the following day. Two days later William Haydock was executed in a field close to the Abbey at Worley and his body was left hanging from the gallows as a warning. After hanging for some time it was cut down and secretly removed by his nephew and hidden here at Cotton Hall, the family home. It was rediscovered when the house was demolished in the 19th century. The archaeological studies of 1985 and 2003 both identified sites of interest in the field at Cotton Hall and possibilities of a moat, but no definite proof. However, both believed that the moat probably followed the boundary of the land around the hall marked as a dashed line on the tithe map of 1838. The Oxford study concluded that any future building work here would probably reveal further unrecorded archaeology and that Lancashire County Council would need to do another survey prior to granting any planning consent. At the time of making of this film, the Great Intact Field next to the Hall site is in the care of Homes England, a public body sponsored by the Ministry of Housing, Communities and Local Government. Its job is to release more land to developers to build new homes. So. The Great Intact Field seems to have been waiting for development since at least the time of the Liverpool University study of 1985. A visit to the Homes England Land Hub in 2021 shows that, despite several other active areas of current construction in Cottam, the Great Intact Field is not even in the pipeline for any future development. This has only been a part of the story that could be told of Cottam, its hall and the Haydocks. 
There are more tales to be told. The history of St Andrew's Chapel in Cotton, the Jacobite Risings of 1715, 1745 and Bonnie Prince Charlie, anti-Catholic mobs, the Hall and its moat, Meg Shelton, the Wood Plumpton Witch, the last squire of Cotton, and a house called the Tag, birthplace of the Haydock responsible for the early 19th century creation of a new edition of the standard English Catholic Bible, which became the most popular English Catholic Bible of the 19th century on both sides of the Atlantic. And all of which came from one family who lived for centuries right here in Cotton. <laughs> 